Well, apparently I'm live. <laughs> I don't I don't know how long you've been sitting there looking at an empty screen, but uh here we go. Um and you can blame my good friend Suzanne Symes, who said to me <laughs> who said to me, Why don't you go live? Because we miss seeing you. I thought, well, you know, who wants to see me? But uh, Suzanne has convinced me. Oh, <laughs> and there she is. Um, and I'm assuming that you can probably see these comments. Um, you know, as you know, I'm technologically disadvantaged. And uh, that's a mouthful for anybody. But um, the thing is this, that uh, those words always ring in my ear, you know, sort of, um, you know, <laughs> pearls and swine and i'm sure that uh, you know um we've all we've all suffered from that haven't we we've all tried to help people and tell them good things and and then we get it chucked back in our face or or we literally get trampled on and uh, it, it doesn't really help but um we have to keep going regardless we have to carry on regardless and um i said to suzanne well, you know, probably if I was going to read the cards or something, it would be more popular. And um, she said, oh, angel cards. And I, said that, and I thought, well, yes, because there, there is a case, isn't there, for uh, using uh, tools or instruments uh, to establish some kind of communication or, or contact between our, 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 our psyches, because each of us is a spirit within and we are psychic beings and uh, using something like a, a deck of cards or um, or stones or um, flowers or anything at all that we can uh, use to pick up psychically uh, emanations that are, exist of course around us and pass those emanations on to the next person and to the next people you know is very nice uh, but sometimes it doesn't completely answer uh, our need for spiritual upliftment. You know, uh, if you get a message uh, like that, it can be just sort of, you know, it's really a, a reading uh, for yourself, uh, which is not a bad thing. It sort of holds a mirror up perhaps and maybe confirms or denies uh, things that you've been thinking about yourself um, actions that you've been contemplating and of course we we get told that we we mustn't uh, tell fortunes but of course if you if you give a psychic reading to somebody you can hardly avoid that because you get stuff from their past coming up you can see where they're heading and that while there are paths of probability as we know you know look at quantum theory for that um it's still very tempting to say to people this letter or the other is likely to happen to you uh, based on what you can see or what you're picking up about their past and their present pathway uh, but uh, however um, apart from that we need to Nicole has asked me how am I oh I'm fine thank you Nicole and I hope you and the baby is fine as well um, many blessings <laughs> And of course, you know, we have to say that, uh, you know, blessings don't come just out of the thin air uh, from nowhere and nobody and nothing. Um, you know, we are surrounded by these angelic hosts. And um, that is so uh, wonderful to be told, not just to be told that, but to experience it. And we don't necessarily experience that on a level where uh, people are giving you a card reading. <laughs> or if I gave you a card reading, you know fun as it can be and interesting and, and uh, useful uh, in some respect um, is still not the same as a contact with somebody in the spirit world. Somebody who has been on this earth, uh, you know, perhaps a relative, somebody we know and love uh, or somebody of, of, you know, of an ancient order. Uh, who may come through with teachings and so on.
but uh, you know there's nothing quite like that communication from somebody from the world of spirit to us and, and we pass that on uh, to anybody who will listen basically <laughs> and sometimes you know uh, somebody said that uh, someone told me that their sister-in-law was going along to a spiritualist meeting where um, you know the medium uh, serving that meeting will be drawn to a member of the audience uh, congregation and will they will receive a message from a loved one in spirit um, and that I think is the finest kind of communication that there is um, the other thing is too that it, on the subject of fortune telling or telling you what's likely to be happening um, it, that that is something you can trust because as long as you can know who is giving you that information and you you know that that person is is, is uh, connected with you in that special relationship um, then you know that you can trust their 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 deliberation because the fact is that they have a, a a wider horizon than we have we can only see as far as our own horizon and those in, who are elevated if you like those in the spirit dimensions can actually see that much further so they can see our pathway much further on than we can um, and so therefore uh, we can trust what they tell us um, I think this is very important when we're, you know, contemplating our own loved ones down here. And uh, perhaps they are suffering from ill health or they are going through a bad, bad patch uh, for one reason or another. And you would like to know what's going to happen. And I think that in most cases it's fine to have some inkling. And if somebody from the world of spirit who loves you and you can identify and you know it's them, um, tells you that they will be all right or that they will need extra care or something like that you can think well that's okay then but if somebody turns over a deck of cards and starts telling you what's going to happen to them I don't think that you should put much uh, much store by that and that's my frank opinion um, you know psychic psychic stuff is is very interesting and it and it and it's uh, it has its place but the only the only kind of uh, pronouncements you can trust is that which comes from the heavenly realms, and um, and that's where mediumship, real mediumship, genuine mediumship, comes into its own. And um, you know, to, I actually have taught many many people uh, to develop their own mediumship, and we always have psychic exercises because it's fun. And uh, it allows us to find out the difference between that psychic level of work and the spiritual, the spirit level of work. Because there is a difference. And I'd like to say hello to everybody. Um, the fact is that uh, I have, I'm very fortunate. I have lots of friends and uh, people who know me or know of me, I suppose, or about me. And of course, I have different uh aspects of my life as we all do and um, I've, I've found it very interesting that so so much so many parts of my life which appear to be totally different from each other um, have actually married up and um, and work with me in a spiritual way uh, because all my various experiences of life have enabled me to see the wider picture and also that I'm never shocked <laughs> which makes for some good mediumship really because uh, there are people on the other side of life who wouldn't come through somebody who had an, an understanding of their own situation how they were on this earth plane um, so I, I find that uh, that always stood me in good stead having done various and a multitude of things um, uh, some of which weren't, weren't too uh, happy uh, but sharing in those experiences with those on the other side of life I found a multitude of people over there who were never angels down here even if they become angels over there you know the fact is this that what we also know as spiritualists and because we've heard this from those on the other side of life is that whatever you've done down here 
and however naughty you may have been or considered, um, when you get over there, you have this opportunity to progress. You know, it's like um, learning all over again and building on all the experiences that you've had while you were down on the earth plane and, um, and some uh, even managed to sort of rise to the most exalted, you know, places and become like angels. And that's really, that really amazing because uh, the most unlikely people turn out to be the angels that we need and who can help us through our own difficulties down here. And uh, this, of course, applies to people's relatives. You know, some of our relatives who, who, who we would never dream of, you know, actually will come through and help you when you're in need and in trouble. So um, it just shows you, actually. Oh, and Suzanne, I will wait to read your book to decide how naughty you have been. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, I've done some pretty uh, strange things in my time. Um, which I, I shouldn't really talk about in public, but I'm sure I will if somebody keeps poking and prodding at me enough. Um, uh, the fact is that, of course, my my sport was always very important to me, skating, that is. I was never actually a sports person as such. I never saw myself as a sporting person, only a skater. And um, it was only in, in later life, really, that I came into the sort of the wider uh, field of sport in general uh, because of my interest in skating that's what sparked it but um, particularly of course women's sports and now that's that's another aspect of uh, my life that is uh, very important to me but uh, it was my skating that brought me into spiritualism in fact and I always was a strange child. My mother used to say to me that she did not know what planet I had come from. She couldn't believe that she'd actually given birth to me. That must have just arrived uh, when she wasn't looking. But um, anyway, we we, <laughs> we we skate over that. Um, but yes, the, the thing is that I always was aware of this other dimension. And uh, when I was a child, I, I had lots of friends who, who were children who came to see me in my bedroom at night, I thought they were time travellers. Well, of course they were, but um, yes, yeah, South London skaters, yes, yeah, stratomized drink rules. <laughs> um, yeah, and they used to come and talk to me and, and they would take me on little travels with them and it was just lovely. I just thought I was time travelling. I had no idea that this was sort of anything different. So no wonder my mum used to think I was very strange. Uh, and uh, even when I was an older person, in my teens, she used to introduce me to her friends. They were a bit posh, you know, she was a lecturer. Um, and she used to say, uh, don't take too much notice of whatever Lynn says. Uh, she's a, a bit strange. I, I think it was the bombs that did it. And, um, and that was it, you know. So I always knew that I was a bit strange. <laughs> well, here we are. Um, and uh, I don't mean to talk about myself only in as much as to say, well, I've had all these experiences in my life and they, as we all do, and it can all go to contribute to your work if you want to be a spiritualist medium, like what I is. And um, I think that uh, spiritual development is very important for all of us. And we don't then have to go to a medium. We can be a medium ourselves. And uh, I think that would be uh, a, a good idea if everybody developed that ability because it's there for everyone. You know, we're all psychic beings because we're all spirit within. And um, we can all develop that ability to actually reach out to those in the world of spirit. And it's not frightening. You know, I really hate it when you know you get fed all the time with these really negative and frightening and scary images of uh, the other side of life of the, of, of the spirit side of life because um you know it is it it's not like that at all and of course you know where there is light there is dark where there is nice there is nasty but if we you know we don't we don't uh, go through life plowing through nastiness if we don't want to um, and in the same way that when we're looking at the spirit side of life 
we don't have to um we, we don't have to we don't have to pay any attention to that at all the nasty side uh, we can ask it to go away and it don't, won't affect us as such now i don't know if um, anybody is still there or uh, if if you're not um because i can't see <laughs> i can't see comments i can see uh a few but um yeah so let's uh let's sort of uh let's look at how we all are tonight and all the worries and troubles that we all have you know whether they're uh overwhelming or just niggling and think of all those people who are, who are suffering and, and on beds of sickness and pain. We need to be able to harness that wonderful love from the spirit world for their loved ones to actually be able to come and alleviate some of that suffering. And we just need to send out our thoughts. That's all we have to do. Um, and there are people tonight who have had operations today and um you know need to be recovering uh we have young bailey who's had operations on his legs to help him to walk in the future because he was uh, stuck in a wheelchair and he'll be able to walk because of the wonderful um wonderful work of the surgeons people have studied and uh, the thing is this that we know that we can ask at times like that um, if we know that our, our loved ones are, are going under the surgeon's knife we can actually ask our loved ones to be close to them for their loved ones to be close to them and this this message will go up and it will get and it'll get heard and acted upon and we can ask for healing for comfort for the surgeon's knives to be guided for uh, the medical staff to be influenced by the angelic hosts we can ask for all those things uh, because basically the the rule is that uh, the angels do not come unbidden uh, that those on the other side of life are basically uh, under under a kind of uh, proviso that really they should only come when when they're invited which is actually opposite to what we get told you must not disturb the dead you must not call upon the dead you must not disturb them what a load of rubbish is that we do that every time we pray we do that every time we send out a thought you know wishing that somebody was better than they than, than they are that they that they get over something or or that we could do something for them all these thoughts are actually disturbing them on the other side of life they want to be disturbed they want to be told they want to be invited to come and help us and our loved ones so um you know we, we ask at this time for all those who are sick and suffering to get that help from their loved ones and um i thought i would uh, read you something to uh we'll find out when now i had this open right this book open but i'm going to close it again because uh, to prove that they do listen to us and that there are people on the other side of life listening, I'm going to my spiritualist hymn book and I'm going to open it asking if we could have something for ourselves tonight. And uh, if you're still awake, that is. And see what they have said and if they've been listening to us. And I have to sort of look very closely. So um, this is what I got. O source divine and life of all, the fount of being, shoreless sea, thy depth would every heart appall that saw not love supreme in thee. We shrink before thy vast abyss, where worlds on worlds eternal brood. We know thee truly but in this, that thou bestowest all our good. And so, mid boundless time and space, O grant us still in thee to dwell, And through the ceaseless web to trace Thy presence working all things well. 
Well, how do they do that? That absolutely, you know, uh, endorses everything that we've been chatting about and thinking. Oh, Suzanne saying it's frozen. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do about it. Uh, tapping the screen. Uh, I'm sorry that it's frozen. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll conclude with, with a prayer and, and hope that, uh, that it actually, uh, actually, oh, it's okay now. Thank God for that. <laughs> oh, um, it's, it's really difficult to know, um, how these things work. Uh, I can talk to the dead. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I can talk to the dead, but not to the living. I don't know now whether you heard that wonderful um, hymn that we got, the, the words that, that actually um, that actually tell us that they are listening to us. So I'll read it again at the, at the risk of being boring. Um, <laughs> they gave us this message. O source divine and life of all, the fount of being's shoreless sea. Thy depth would every heart appall that saw not love supreme in thee. We shrink before thy vast abyss, where worlds on worlds eternal brood. We know thee truly but in this, that thou bestowest all our good. And so mid boundless time and space, O grant us still in thee to dwell, and through the ceaseless web, to trace thy presence working all things well. Um, so uh, really, <laughs> I, hopefully then you, you've got that. Um, and of course, we, we pray, don't we, that, that all those uh, who are uh, ill at the moment with various things that beset us um, are helped by the angelic hosts. And... Um, I suppose, uh, you know, the odd personal anecdote doesn't go amiss. And I know that, you know, my loved ones managed to get a word in here and there. And I know that yours, yours will as well. And uh, the main thing is to know that, that all will be well. I think that uh, we've probably come to the end of, of my chat. I, I don't want you to be bored. Uh what I'm hoping is that um, you will get some kind of sign yourself that your loved ones are close to you, people that you love, that you feel the absence of very keenly and that somehow or other they will be able to get through to you and make their presence felt, make you feel better. Um, there's nothing worse, is there, than feeling bereft of loved ones, but just to know that they're fine. You have to think it's like they're on holiday and they're on holiday where we're going to be able to go and join them at some point. So our lives will pro propel us towards that point where we will be reunited with our loved ones in the fullness of time. Meanwhile, they'll do everything they can to help us. This This is something that I know and something that everybody in the spiritualist movement understands and of course this, this covers animals as well you know the animals are are our friends and some of them you know uh, are are in the healing mode they're actually uh, able to give us healing they're very simple souls very simple and uh, one time, you know, I used to do um, animal aura portraits and uh, that was always very interesting and so clear and there was never any shadow in any of them that, you know, that shadow of um, of the of uh, that exists in the human psyche, unfortunately. Um, and uh, there's never anything like that in an animal's aura. They're always clear and innocent um, of any guile. Um, 
and that even goes for you know large predators um they they are not they are not um, vicious in the way that uh, human beings can be so uh, we're the worst aren't we um so of course at this time we pray for all the animals that that they be you know uh, looked after and and uh, live their lives out as as as, as we would wish uh, and without um, pain and, and and torture that that is uh, that is their lot when they fall into the hands of human beings so um well i hope that you have a, a good night because we're speaking here at night in in England and I know that friends around the world are all in different time zones all in different spaces I mean it's absolutely amazing isn't it and the fact is that you know if people say well you know everything's by accident and and there is no God but I always say well look you know take this planet for instance you know the one that my mum thinks I wasn't from throw a ball up in the air and see if it stays there I mean, basically, we're we're on a we're on a, a ball, a globe that's in space, and it's just hanging there, and like it's just amazing. That's the first thing that we we must think about, and then everything else besides. It just points to a grand design, a great designer, a great architect of multi-universes and uh, I think it's just wonderful so I hope that you feel a little cheered and uh, we'll uh, we'll close this evening I hope that uh, I suppose what I should do is, 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 is pick a card but you know when I was uh, when I was when I was uh, teaching mediumship development and doing this psychic work as well I used to say, you know, you can read anything. You can read anything psychically. Um, and you can pick up anything. You can pick up somebody's glasses and get a reading of it. You can pick up anything that they have and get a reading from it. You can pick up any card and get a reading off that for somebody. Um, it, they're, just, they're, they're just psychic tools. And what you will get if you try it, just try it. Um, hold something that belongs to somebody else and see what what sort of feelings you pick up from it. That's for a start, uh, because we're very sentient beings, so we feel things. And, and that's the first thing we, we can do. We can sort of feel something, perhaps warmth or cold, or we, we might feel upset or we might feel happy. You know, all these different things that we can pick up just from somebody's object. Do try it. Um, and people won't mind if, if you want to... Um, have a go at that because everybody likes to be told about themselves <laughs> which is how we started this chat wasn't it um everybody likes a little reading about themselves it's like sort of holding a mirror up to someone and saying look this is what you're like and um and then what you will find is that you get something come in some sort of emanation into your mind that wasn't there before and that will be one of your loved ones trying to give you a message. <laughs> so um, do try. Um, I will. I will do the same thing. I, I'll uh, be a bit ridiculous, wouldn't it? Be picking up something from you because I haven't got. I can imagine that all of you are giving me um, a little stone. Okay, I shall imagine that. And I shall say, this message is for everybody who is watching. You will get over it. There you are. That is the message I get for everybody. You will get over it, I hear, very strongly. So you yourselves, each one of you individually, know that that must be relevant to you. Um, it's certainly relevant to me um, and uh, there you are you see so do tr so do try 
and do something like that yourself. So I know that many of you who are watching are mediums in your own right. And are not, and some of you professional mediums, meaning, you know, you, you go out there and work all the time and, and you have sittings, you have p private people come to see you and everything. But, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to do what I just did. You know, to start from, oh, oh, Diana, you get all oh, your... The king. I didn't know the previous owner was there and was a good person. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. You know w what we always did in in circle. I, I'm still thinking about maybe doing another circle here. Was something I called bum sentience, which is you sit on a chair that that somebody has vacated. So say there's four of you. You do a sort of musical chairs. Hello, Craig. <laughs> Bless you, dear. Um, and. Um, you sit on the on the chair of the next person and you sit there and you close your eyes and, and you pick up from the seat of your pants all the feelings that they've left there and then you relay them and that's good fun too. But certainly you can do what I just said to you. You know, you remember I imagined, oh dear, I've gone again. Um, I think I, I probably will have to leave now. Um, I don't know whether to wait and uh, I'll tap the screen and see if anything happens. Uh, oh dear. I think I've gone back again. Oh dear. I, th <laughs> I think I'm being told to go away. In the old days on the musicals, I had a big hook. And if, and if, oh, Barry, bless you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, th I, th I was going to say in the old days, the musical, they should have a big hook. And if, and if anybody was giving them a problem, they would hook them off. And I can imagine that, that I'm being hooked off now. But um, God bless you all. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this little chat. And I believe that uh, although it was live, you'd be able to play it back and I may be able to download it or something and and then we can uh, record it for pros for pr posterity <laughs> and I'm afraid that the older we all get and the older I get the more posterity seems to beckon but um, I'll say God bless you all I hope you've enjoyed our little chat together and uh, I will Suzanne um, I, I will do this again. I, I was feeling a little downhearted, to be honest, and thinking, well, nobody wants to see an old dear like me warbling on. But um, and of course, that 17th century nun's prayer where she says she she hopes that she she doesn't keep rehearsing her ailments and so on. Nobody likes a sour old lady. Well, you know, let, let's uh, enough of that. So, uh, Lisa, I'd love to see. Well, you know, I have to think about this circle thing because uh, I would have a circle here at home. Um, I can't travel very much now, of course, as you probably know. And I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, oh, thanks, Diana and you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, I'll have to try and see whether I can organise one of these circles on Zoom or something. Uh, you know, me and technology. Uh, a Zoom thing would probably be better than this. At least hopefully it wouldn't freeze or whatever. Although I did love that ad, but oh, I would come to you. Oh, yes, OK. Well, we'll, 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 uh, we'll message me. <laughs> I always forget about this. You can message me on Facebook, of course, all of you. Um, let me know if. if you know, if you would like to come to a circle or something, and yes, Suzanne, yes, you're you're showing me up now. Your my private thoughts to you, I, and I thought that no nobody would <laughs> would want to listen or or join me, but um, yes. So I do hope that you will get a good night's sleep. It's always so necessary, isn't it? Uh, God you know in in his wisdom and mercy gave us this respite and uh, a time for repairing ourselves and and a time also when when those in spirit can actually visit us um you know we we're fortunate if we have one or two 
uh, visitations in our lives really while we're asleep but um, <clears throat> when we do we always remember them don't we so uh, ah huh. well uh, yes Kathy is fast asleep now because she's got park run in the morning um, and I think I'll possibly go along there and take a video of everybody running around which uh, you know I, I try not to be jealous <laughs> and I know they see this funny old person there with a the little camera taking a video and and maybe they don't realize that <clears throat> I was a speed skater <laughs> and uh, I wasn't always this uh, this decrepit and this old but um, it comes to all of us if we're lucky that's the point and uh, I always remember the Bible tells us that you know gray hair is a crown in glory so uh, and it sure is you know those of us who have lost people too young and uh, I number among them um, lost lost young people um, people who've gone much too soon um, we know that gray hair is indeed our crown in glory if we're given a blessing of that so I'll say good night to you and um, I suppose I should mention, as I said, that you could message me on Facebook. Um, oh, Diana. <laughs> well, you know, it is, it is a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, I, I so understand. And uh, it, it, it never leaves us, does it? Um, I lost my eldest son in February this year which was which was pretty you know difficult to get over but i know that um you know getting over isn't really an option is it we we continue and and we have to find an acceptance about things like that so i say good night to you and god bless you keep you safe and uh, may you have a good night a really good night i say night night and don't forget message me on facebook of course and uh, don't forget, um, you know, if you've got anything to say about anything, I'd be happy to answer, uh, speak with you about it and uh, answer any questions. Yeah. God bless you. Nighty night. Ah. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. Uh, but the fact is they can. Uh, he, uh, he has popped in now and again, Diana, um, as they do. Um <laughs> And uh, and uh, he spoke with my uh, middle daughter uh, out of the blue, literally, when she was in her car uh, just yesterday. And uh, she was so surprised. But uh, there you go. So, uh, yes, enough. So uh, lots and lots and lots of love. And um, I hope to speak to you again soon. I'm going to... Uh, do the finish now, uh, which one goes poke finish.